okay uh, good morning students again uh, today we are going to discuss the endospore forming bacteria which are included basically in the gram positive groups which are basically included in the gram positive groups okay starting uh, yesterday we have discussed we had discussed about the gram positive cocci today i am going to discuss some more, more of the groups of the gram positive uh, endospore forming the name itself says these bacteria are basically endospore forming bacteria and most of the endospore forming bacteria are rod shaped but some of them are also cocci but some of them are also cocci ones and the motility if present is by means of a is by means of a peritricus flagella and basically they are divided into two, two groups aerobic facultative aerobic or facultative anaerobic spore forming rods and cocci okay aerobic facultative anaerobic spore forming rods and cocci and the second group is basically anaerobic spore forming rods anaerobic spore forming rods uh, some of the examples of uh, endospore forming bacteria Amphibacillus xylans, Bacillus clostridium, Desulfatomaculum, Oscillospira, Gullermonde, Sporohalobacter, Sporolactobacillus insulinus, Sporosarcina, Sulfidobacillus, Thermosulfooxidans, Synprospora, Branti. Okay, moving forward uh, with the aerobic facultative aerobic or facultative and aerobic spore forming rods and cocci and the name aerobic means as you all know they are going to use oxygen as an terminal electron acceptors and uh, some of them which are facultative anaerobes also which may use oxygen or either any of the other organic compounds ions etc and the genus basically contains rod shaped bacteria as well as some of them are cocci also and most of the species are basically harmless saprophytes which are normally usually found in the soil fresh water or or sea water and many of the extracellular enzymes that hydrolyze proteins or complex polysaccharides out of the cell okay so they are they form variety of extracellular enzymes which hydrolyze proteins and complex polysaccharides and they the important causes they are the some of them are the important causes of the food spoilage because of their heat resistance of the endospores which they produce and one such species bacillus species may survive even the milk pasteurization or inadequate heat treatment during the canning of foods during the canning of foods okay you will study the canning of foods in your semester four of microbiology okay right now uh, whoever the faculty will be teaching you in your semester four uh, right now in the short i will tell you what is canning canning is just the packaging of foods and it's a process how foods are packed as a whole there the term is used is basically canning because in the older times okay metal cans were used to to pack the foods instead of today's which use plastics now uh, first species uh, of this group which is uh, basically aerobic is an bacillus okay and uh, it is one of the most studied species in the gram positive bacteria they are road shape vegetative cells are peritrichosly flagellated form endospores which are resistant to a wide to a wide range of adverse conditions to a wide range of the adverse conditions they may be aerobic or facultative and aerobic acid is produced from glucose and most reduce nitrate to nitrites most reduce nitrate to nitrites and 
most species produce catalase and most of them are oxidase positive also most of them are oxidase positive also now this one is a photograph of an bacillus anthracis which is basically a pathogen okay where you can clearly see the endospores okay i hope uh, you can uh, see my cursor now here uh, the cells of uh, bacillus anthracis where the here white portion which appears here 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 basically are the endospores basically are the endospores of the bacillus anthracis and uh, the figure given here on the right side which is a which is of a bacillus cirrus which is of a bacillus cirrus stained with the stuck's green nucleic acid stain viewed by the epifluorescence and differential interference contrast microscopy okay they are viewed using differential interference contrast microscopy and the cells which glow okay which glow yellow are basically dead cells of the bacillus cirrus okay which are, are the basically dead cells of the bacillus cirrus now uh, this next one this uh, photograph is of an bacillus thuringiensis is of an bacillus thuringiensis which you may have known by its property to kill various insect larvae okay in the short you may know it as bt okay bt in the short form okay for bacillus thuringiensis okay and these are the spores and the crystals okay which is basically a para sporal crystal beneath the endospore okay beneath the endospore now bacillus subtilis okay this is one of the common bacteria which is usually found in our uh, routine lab work also in our routine lab work also and the uh, on the photograph given on right side is basically of bacillus cirrus okay which is of a bacillus cirrus and uh, the growth of the bacillus cirrus appears to be filamentous to be filamentous okay i'm try to zoom and give you a more clear idea of the colony of bacillus cirrus okay now the next one now the next one aerobic or facultative and aerobic spore forming rods and cocci again yeah, sorry uh, same group okay i have uh, taken up some of the examples in which bacillus subtilis and bacillus cirrus are of the basically common mesophilic saprophytes and they are widely distributed in the nature they produce extracellular enzymes that hydrolyze starch and casein and bacillus cirrus can also cause food poisoning can also cause food poisoning uh, when uh, in the semester 3 okay uh, you will learn more about the bacillus subtilis as it's a part of your practical also okay where you will observe the hydrolysis of starch as well as casein during your practicals of the semester 3 Okay, whoever the faculty uh, will be teaching you the practicals okay the next one is an uh, bacillus stereothermophilus which is basically a thermophilic organism having a minimum growth temperature of 30 to 45 degrees celsius and a maximum of 65 to 75 degrees celsius and their endospores are highly resistant to the heat and therefore are one of the important organisms which cause spoilage which cause spoilage of canned foods okay uh, one of the thermophilus is also there in our lab in the form of the strip okay if you want to see you can contact the respective faculty uh, whoever is available and the thermophilic one which is basically is i remember it's an geobacillus stereothermophilus it's a thermophile okay which is present in our lab 
okay it is stored in a strip form if you want to know more about it okay you may contact the lab uh, staff okay respective faculties of the college other faculties now next one is a bacillus polymixa unlike other bacillus species the polymixa has the ability to form gas during the sugar fermentation and other unusual characteristics is its ability to fix nitrogen under anaerobic conditions is to fix nitrogen under anaerobic conditions okay now the next one bacillus thuringiensis is a basically a soil bacterium it has been noticed after identifying their unique biochemical potential of the crystal protein which is also known as bt toxin which has insecticidal property also okay it has a insecticidal property also they are pathogenic to insects and can also kill them so ingestion of the sporulated cultures of bacillus thuringiensis by the larvae of lepidoptera which is basically an insect results in the paralytic disease of a of this insect okay next one is bacillus anthracis next one is bacillus anthracis is the only bacillus species that is highly pathogenic for animals and human beings and is the causative agent of the anthrax is the causative agent of the anthrax okay and the next one last one other than bacillus uh, species which is included in this group is sporosarcina is sporosarcina this genus contains cocci that are arranged in tetrads or cubical packets or cubical packets of eight cells sporosarcini and are widely distributed in fertile soil where they play an active role in the decomposition where they play an active role in the decomposition of the urea okay they are usually present in the fertile soil now the next one which is an clostridium okay this one basically it's an anaerobe is basically an anaerobe and usually stay in gram positive and at least in early stages of the growth and in some species gram positive cells have also been not seen and morphology they are of road shapes and uh, they produce endospores which are over or uh, spherical and usually distend the cell and some species will grow but not sporulate in the presence of the air and clostridium most species are obligatory anaerobic but their tolerance to oxygen varies according to the species to species clostridia are basically saccharolytic proteolytic or neither or both and they do not reduce sulfate to sulfide or sulfite and usually they are catalyst negative although a few species may produce few species may produce trace amounts of the catalyst okay a few species may produce trace amount of the catalyst now some of the examples of the genus uh, clostridium okay the first one is a uh, clostridium botulinum and which causes a severe and a fatal type of food poisoning which is uh, known as botulism which is known as botulism and this disease can if un if untreated may lead to cause of a may lead to cause of a death of an human being within just 48 hours okay if not treated okay next one is an tetanus okay positive agent of tetanus which is an clostridium tetani 
and the characteristic terminal spores are formed by this species which is basically used for the identification as well as differentiation of the Clostridium species of the Clostridium species okay next comes Clostridium perfringens okay where Clostridium perfringens is the major causative agent of the wound infections and known as gas gangrene okay yesterday we I gave you some idea about the gangrene where the blackening of the cells or the muscles occur okay now in the same area where there is gangrene the gas is also produced okay by the infection of the clostridium perfringens and some of the strains of clostridium perfringens can also cause a type of food poisoning also and next one is clostridium difficile next one is clostridium difficile which causes pseudomembranous colitis, a severe disease of a bowel. Okay, basically, this disease is of a digestive system. Okay, you will learn more if you select uh, microbiology. Okay, uh, so in your in your next year. Next one is a Clostridium thermosacrolyticum, which is basically a thermophilic growing optimally at 55 degrees celsius and minimum temperature required is 45 and the maximum is 67 degrees celsius and the spores are extremely heat resistant and cause spoilage of canned foods and cause spoilage of canned foods uh, this is uh, this one is in one of the responsible bacteria for the spoilage of canned foods okay because uh, in some of the foods it can it can tolerate heat for a longer time for example uh, foods which are heated at about 70 degrees celsius okay there are chances if the clostridium thermosacralyticum is present there are chances that this bacteria may survive the heat treatment next one is clostridium pasteurianum clostridium pasteurianum is basically a mesophilic soil clostridium that is particularly noted for its ability that is particularly noted for its ability to fix nitrogen okay is particularly noted for its ability to fix nitrogen now uh, please have a look of all the four different types of clostridium okay please have a look i've been giving you all a half a minute which includes uh, clostridium tetani clostridium perfringens clostridium botulinum and clostridium difficile and clostridium difficile Next one is desulfatomaculum. Next one is desulfatomaculum. Unlike Clostridia, the members of this genus obtain energy by anaerobic respiration with the sulfate serving as a terminal electron acceptor, whereas Clostridia does not use sulfate. Okay, it uses various other organic substrates. Okay. In the case of desulfatomaculum, it can also use organic substrates such as lactic or pyruvic acid, which serves as a electron donors, which serves as an electron donors and large amount of hydrogen sulfide are produced during the growth. The organisms occur in the soil, freshwater intestine of insects, and the rumen of the animals, and the rumen of the animals as well. Okay, uh, this one is a scanning electron micrograph of the desulfatomaculum acid oxidants. Please have a look. Does uh, any one of you know how to use this scale given here? 
okay if you know please let me know during our webex session today okay if you know how to use this scale please let me know in our webex session today now moving towards the next one asporogenic gram positive ones okay asporogenic gram positive ones basically which i am going to discuss is basically rods they are heterogeneous group is composed of harmless saprophytes as well as parasitic and pathogenic organisms cells range from long rods to very short rods for example in the genus lactobacillus and the one genus caryophanion is unusual in that is composed of a large dick cell shaped cells arranged in the trichomes okay now uh, going to discuss one by one okay lactobacillus the genus lactobacillus morphology and motility long to very short rods and often in chains and usually are not motile is usually are not motile oxygenic relationships strictly fermentative organisms but can also tolerate air but can also tolerate air and the some strains are purely anaerobic okay catalyst taste is basically negative for lactobacillus other characteristics of the genus lactobacillus is they produce large amount of lactic acid and homo one heterofermentative ones and occur as saprophytes in the fermenting animals and plant products or as parasites in the mouth vagina and intestinal tract of humans and warm blooded animals okay most of the lactobacilli uh, are basically harmless most of them just the reason uh, they are used in various fermentation of the foods also next one is an listeria okay very short rods often in chains and motile by means of peritracus flagella okay when grow at 25 degrees celsius they produce very few flagella but okay and uh, sorry a uh, very few flagella are formed at 37 degrees celsius oxygenic relationship they are aerobic to microaerophilic they are catalase they are catalase positive the species of listeria monocytogenes is basically a parasite and the pathogen of wide variety of animals and in humans it causes meningitis in adults and prenatal or postnatal disease in infants meningitis is basically a infection in a human being which occurs in the meninges okay which occurs in the meninges which is found in the which is found in the brain of a human now next comes say brocothrix brocothrix rods often occurring in long and uh, kinged filaments like structure and are non motile they are facultative anaerobic they are catalase positive best growth occurs at 20 to 22 degrees celsius but none of them grow at 37 degrees celsius they are saprophytes and may be found in meat and meat products okay may be found in meat and meat products next comes reni bacterium next one is reni bacterium morphology they are short rods non motile they are aerobic and catalase positive growth occurs best at 15 to 18 degrees celsius and the parasites they are the parasites of the salmonid feces causing a kidney damage okay next comes the curtia next comes the group curtia they are rods and occur in chains and bowl motile by means of peritricus fragella they are aerobic and catalase positive 
they are harmless saprophytes occurring in meat okay and uh, meat products and meat products and in the animal dung as well next comes a interesting uh, one okay caryophenone which has a large disc shaped cells arranged in the trichomes and motile by means of peritrichus flagella okay and the oxygenic relationship is they are aerobic and till now the catalyst test is not reported for the caryophenone okay and other characteristics are thermorphology is unusual and distinctive saprophytic occurring in the ruminant dung occurring in the ruminant dung next comes regular non sporing gram positive rots regular okay and just uh, reading out the examples as we already discussed this one procothrix carnobacterium caryophenon epsolothrix rhizopathy curtia lactobacillus listeria renibacterium salmonera okay Okay, uh, I have taken one or two examples in more detail. Okay, one of them is lactobacillus. One of them is lactobacillus, which are gram positive. The rods are long and slender and sometimes bend to short and often the, they are often corineum form bacilli. Mortality is rare, but when it occurs, the flagella are peritrichus. The flagella are peritrichus and they are non spore formers and the facultative and aerobes and have a fermentative type of metabolism grows best at 35 degrees celsius and the metabolism is basically fermentative with a large amount of lactate produced from the carbohydrates and like cytochromes and the nitrate reduction is unusual and only occurs with the terminal ph is above 6 and they lack catalase as we studied okay and as i told you they are found in variety of uh, habitats also they are found in dairy grain meat fish products as well as water sewage uh, beer fruits fruit juices sour crot sour drop sour mess and the, they are part of the normal flora of human beings of mouth intestinal tract vagina of many animals including the humans their pathogenicity is very rare okay what do you mean by normal flora normal flora of human beings for example are basically those microbes which are normally present which are normally present in the human beings which are normally present in the human beings and generally do not cause any disease and live in association with the human beings now please have a look of the lactobacillus moving forward to the next one curtia staining gram positive the regular unbranched rods they often, they often occur in chains older cultures are usually composed of coccoid cells they are usually motile by means of peritrichus flagella specialized structures they are non-spore forming and produces a broad feather like growth on the nutrient gelatin slants on the nutrient gelatin slants okay bird like feather okay bird feather like growth it's a strict arab grows at 35 degrees celsius neither produce acid from carbohydrates in peptone medium nor hydrogen sulfide and are catalase positive and are catalase positive Habitat, they are commonly found in the meat after storage of few days at 16 degrees Celsius. It is likely that the meat becomes contaminated in the abattoir and commonly isolated from the feces of farm animals, especially chickens and pigs. 
it has been isolated from the stomach and intestinal contents of the mammoth also okay and the pathogenicity they are uh, isolated they are isolated from the clinical materials also in some cases and most commonly the feces of patients and most commonly the species of patients suffering from the diarrhea but there is no evidence and but there is no evidence of the pathogenicity okay Now moving forward, irregular shaped non-sporing gram positive rods, okay, there are variety of bacteria in this group, okay, just I am not going to read out this one, moving forward, okay, this irregular shaped non-sporing gram positive rods includes three groups basically, one is aerobic or facultative anaerobic filamentous rods, aerobic and facultative anaerobic branch filamentous rods and anaerobic filamentous or non-filamentous rods okay the first two contains first one contains non-filamentous this one contains filamentous but the last one is filamentous or non-filamentous but they are anaerobic okay as the name itself says aerobic and facultative anaerobic filamentous rods okay that exhibit swellings club shapes or other deviations from a uniform rod shape and aerobic and aerobic or facultative anaerobic nature being capable of a respiratory type of metabolism and in some instances and also of a fermentative type of metabolism okay uh, let's discuss few of the examples of one such example uh, is of an coriny bacterium is of a coriny bacterium this genus contains rod shaped cells which are pleomorphic and frequently exhibit club shaped swellings and a palisade arrangement and a palisade arrangement these cells accumulate intracellular volute granules okay which are basically also known as metachromatic granules which stain reddish purple with the dilute methylene blue and cell walls also contains mycolic acids and the coronary bacterium are divided into three groups found in soil and water and there are animal or human parasites and pathogens and few of them are plant pathogens too one such example of a coriny bacterium which is a pathogen for the human being is basically coriny bacterium diphtheria which causes diphtheria in human beings. Next example is an arthrobacter which are basically characterized by an unusual rod caucus cycle. Okay, what do you mean by rod caucus cycle? Okay, let me read out. The cells in the log phase of growth are irregular rods but I show a tendency towards a rudimentary branching but in the stationary phase they are distinctly cocci okay distinctly cocci when these are inoculated in the fresh medium they give rise to rod shaped cell so when they are in a so when they are in a log phase their shape will be their shape will be rod shaped but when they are in the stationary phase, their shape will be cocci. Okay, brevi bacterium, next one. Again, it follows the same rod caucus cycle. Okay, uh, one such example is of brevi bacterium linens, which forms a orange colonies and is also a salt tolerant and have a usual habitat on the surface of certain cheeses such as brick and Limburger. Pieces. Okay, uh, for your point, if you want to note, there are more than 100 types of type of cheeses in the world, okay, which are fermented 
by a variety of microbes by a variety of microbes which you will learn in your semester 4 where it produces a proteolytic enzymes that aid in the cheese ripening process that aid in the cheese ripening process the next one which includes is an microbacterium microbacterium are basically saprophytes and occur in milk and dairy products okay next comes a salunomonas this genus basically contains irregularly shaped rods that may be slightly filamentous and show a rudimentary branching and shows a rudimentary branching and in the case of old cultures some may be coccoid also and uh, one of the special ability of this group this genus is to degrade cellulose and use it as they are and use it as they are major carbon and the energy source okay now moving forward with the next group which is an aerobic or facultative and aerobic branch filamentous rods okay the bacteria of this group form colonies which at first are microscopic in size micro colonies and contained branch filamentous cells okay as the colonies develop to microscopic size the many of cells become diphtheroid okay which basically resembles corine bacteria which basically resembles corine bacteria or coccoid in the shape one such example which includes agromyces is basically microaerophilic to aerobic and are catalase negative and it's an saprophyte and it's an saprophyte that occurs in the soil okay now let us first uh, discuss some of the examples of anaerobic and aerobic non filamentous or filamentous rods or filamentous rods starting with the propionic bacterium okay morphology they are pleomorphic means it has a variety of shapes non motile mainly from the fermentation propionic and acetic acid is produced are produced some species occur in the dairy products others are normoflora of human skin and of the intestines of humans and animals one of the example of propionic bacterium acne may be related to the skin disease acne vulgaris also next one is an eubacterium which is again a pleomorphic may be motile or non motile okay as all of them are anaerobic they will be using a fermentation mode either butyric or other acids acetic acid and formic acids or no major acids are produced during the fermentation they are found in the human oral cavity intestinal tract of humans and animals infected tissues soils water spoiled foods and usually are not pathogenic next next comes the genus actinomycetes not the not the group genus okay the initial cells are filamentous with the branching and eventually diphthroid cells predominate a moderate amount of acidic and other sometimes formic together with large amounts of succinate and lactic acid or both are produced and the oral cavity in humans and animals and human female human female genital tract which can may also have actinomyces israeli and other species which can cause human actinomycosis one such example other uh, than israeli is actinomyces bovis which causes actinomycosis lumpy joe in the in the cattle okay now moving towards the next one which is an bifidobacterium again they are pleomorphic and non motile 
एसिटिक एंड लैक्टिक एसिड्स इंटेस्टिनल ट्रैक्ट ऑफ ह्यूमन बींग्स फाउंड इन नॉट नॉन टू बी एंड आर नॉट नॉन टू बी पैथोजेनिक ओके बिफिडो बैक्टीरियम नेक्स्ट वन ओके दे आर ग्राम पॉजिटिव and often stain irregularly with methylene blue and are non acid fast and rods of a shapes have club shaped or spatulated extremites they are non motile non spore formers sacralistic and are obligate and aerobes and are obligate and aerobes products acetic acid and lactic acid are produced and glucose is degraded exclusively and characterized by the fructose 6 phosphate shunt which is basically characterized by fructose 6 phosphate shunt now this one is an stain of an bifido bacterium next one is an actinomyces okay in more detail they are gram positive but stain irregularly and are not acid fast form straight or slightly curved rods and slender filaments with true branching short rods with or without club ends may occur singly or in pairs with the diphthoid arrangement in short chains or in clusters okay the filaments are either straight or wavy with a varying degrees of branching and may have swollen clubbed or clavate ends they are non motile non spore formers they are of they often produce filamentous macro colonies but mature colonies are either rough and dry to cumbly or smooth soft to mucoid and soft to mucoid and most colonies are white to gray white or creamy white and a colony actinomyces odontolytikis forms a deep red colony in blood agar and actinomyces denticulans forms pink colonies okay they are homoorganotrophs facultative anaerobes and have a fermentative type of metabolism both occurs best between 35 to 37 degrees celsius require carbon dioxide for maximum growth organic nitrogen is required for the growth products formic acetic and succinic acids but not the propionic acid are the end products of glucose fermentation and indole is not produced and indole is not produced unique features are basically amino acids of cell wall peptidoglycan or lysine ornithine or aspartic acid may or may not be present diamino palmitic acid and glycine are absent are absent okay please have a look of a photograph of a actinomyces genus okay going towards the next one now comes the actinomyces group okay which includes no cardioform actinomyces actinomyces with multicolor sporangia actinoplates streptomyces and other genera such as medulomyces thermonospora and fens thermoactinomyces okay this one is in photograph of fens thermoactinomyces okay actinomyces uh, are the organisms which give you a earthy smell okay if you may have uh, experience the earthy smell during the rainy season okay when uh, due to the first rain okay 
Now, general properties of the actinum acids. When growing on a solid substrate, atoms such as agar, the branch network of hyphae developed actinum acids by actinum acids grows both on the surface of the substratum and into form a substrate mycelium and into substrate mycelium and septa usually divide hyphae into long cells containing several nucleoids and sometimes a tissue like mass results and may be called a thallus and may be called a thallus many actinomycetes also have an aerial mycelium that extends above substratum and forms asexual thin walled spores called conidia thin walled spores called conidia or conidio spores on the end of the filaments if the spores are located in the sporangium they are called sporangio spores they are called sporangio spores the spores can vary greatly in shape okay the spores can vary greatly in the shape okay and the next general features are actinum acid spores develop septal formation at filament tips and usually in response to the nutrient depri deprivation and uh, most are particularly heat resistant but do withstand desiccation as well and thus have a considerable adaptive value and most actinum acids are not motile and the motility is present it is confined to the flagellated spores it is confined to the flagellated spores and the actinum acid servo composition varies greatly among the different groups and is of considerable taxonomic importance as well and four major cellular types can be distinguished according to the structure of peptidoglycan composition and structure and the amino acid in the tetrapeptide chain position 3 in the presence of glycine in the interpeptide bridges and peptidoglycan sugar contains now what is basic difference between uh, actinomycetes which are gram positive bacteria and the moles okay which is basically in fungi the first difference is the actinomycetes represent a prokaryotic structure whereas fungi Moles represent a eukaryotic structure. Filaments of actinomycetes are small as compared to the fungi. They are just 1 to 5 micrometer in diameter, never more than few millimeters. Whereas the hyphae fungi may have diameter of 10 to 20 micrometer in diameter, but they are mycelia are generally several inches long. The cell wall of actinomyces possess peptidoglycan similar to bacteria as they are bacteria and contain muramic acid and dipamilo acids which are found only in the bacteria whereas the fungi their cell wall is made up of chitin so their cell wall is also known as chitinous cell wall in the case of actinomycetes sexual reproduction is basically absent okay and whereas in the fungi sexual reproduction is present in many true molds they are truly branched bacteria whereas the molds are basically they are true filamentous fungi they are true filamentous fungi now uh, this one is a photograph of an actinomycetes Now, uh, again, based on a photograph of an actin mycete, uh, on the left, which is in figure A, is a photomicrograph which shows septomyces griseous substrate, hyphae yellow, growing into the agar, and the white aerial hyphae growing away from the colony surface. Okay, 
yellow color here okay and white goes here okay and this is overall how actinum acids are branched okay how they are branched and the colony consists of actively growing aerial hyphae that can cannibalize substrate hyphae to obtain nutrients and the live hyphae hyphae which are live and the dead are basically white okay dead are basically white okay now streptomyces the photograph of a streptomyces this one is a colony of a streptomyces gracious okay which is basically actinomycete which produces antibiotic streptomycin and each colony is about 0.5 cm in the diameter 0.5 cm in diameter so this colony is of streptomyces scabies which grow which grows on the potato okay see such structures is it is basically of streptomyces scabies now moving forward with the next one mycobacterium okay mycobacterium they are the basically acid fast bacteria they can be not stained with the help of gram stains okay due to the higher concentration of the tachoic acid which are present in the mycobacteria morphology they are rod shaped and occasionally branched filaments also they are non motile non spore formers or non capsulated okay they are very slow growing bacteria they are very slow growing bacteria which is ranging from 2 to 40 days required for the incubation according to the different species according to the different species diffusible pigments are basically rare all of them are aerobes and uh, all of them are almost resistant to penicillin and grow very slow grow at very slow speed okay and these aerobes have a high lipid content in both cells and cell walls okay mycobacteria are aerobic and non motile except one of the bacteria which is mycobacterium marinum and other another examples are microbacterium sorry mycobacterium kansai mycobacterium marinum mycobacterium semiae mycobacterium tuberculosis mycobacterium avium intracellulare mycobacterium bovis mycobacterium ulcerans the mycobacteria are basically widespread organisms living typically in water including tap water treated with the chlorine also and also in the food sources also in the food sources and some however including the tuberculosis and the leprosy organisms appear to be obligate parasites and are not found as free living members of the genus okay another examples where mycobacterium phili phili and segmentis are harmless saprophytes mycobacterium tuberculosis as you all know is a causative agent of the tuberculosis mycobacterium kansai and mycobacterium intracellulare causes non contagious tuberculosis mycobacterium sacrophyllaceum causes lymph denitis in children and mycobacterium lepre is an causative agent is an causative agent of the leprosy now uh, this one is an cell wall of the mycobacterium tuberculosis okay very clearly see a arabino galactone mycolate layer okay which is made up of arabinos and galactose okay and also it contains peptidoglycan layer which contains n ester glucosamine and n acetyl glutamic acid m dipamilo pamilic acid l and d aline okay but the unusual property is the presence of higher concentration of mycolic acids okay you can see the area 
here it okay which is basically lipids free lipids glycolipids or peptidoglycolipids it also contains it also contains polypeptides purified porine protein derivatives now photograph of mycobacteria okay so uh, i am going to end my lecture